everyone, I'm Nick Meter. I'm the founder of Soul Lift Cacao, and I want to share a video in response to a question that I keep getting, which is, what makes ceremonial cacao different than the cacao that I can get at a health food store or on the internet? It's actually a complex question. There's not one single answer. Different people will tell you different things, but I'm going to share with you what's important to me when I'm choosing the sources for Soul Lift Cacao. So one thing is that it's very important for the cacao to be grown at a family farm on a very small scale. When it is done on a small scale, then there can be a lot more attention to quality control at every step of the way, from tree all the way to the finished product. In some cases, this also means that sustainability measures can be incorporated into the growing and the production of the cacao. One source that I've worked with has a spring water pool that they create hydroelectricity from so that they are working totally off the grid and they can still grind the cacao to make the blocks of ceremonial paste. Another important step to me in creating ceremonial cacao is to roast the beans over an actual wood fire. This is the ancient traditional way of producing cacao and it can impact the flavor, it can even impact the energy and the sensation of the cacao. So for instance, if you get cacao from a health food store, chances are that it's been produced on a very large scale and dried or even roasted in a propane oven and even if it says raw, this could be the case. There's not a lot of control about what raw even means. Uh, it could be that it's heated below 118 degrees Fahrenheit, but who knows? There's nobody checking on these things. And especially if you get it from a health food store, there's no way to know that. Now another thing that's important is for the workers in the ceremonial cacao industry to have safe working conditions. So this is another potential benefit of keeping things on a small scale. Most people are familiar with the idea of fair trade, which is a good thing. It's better than, than not having anything like that. But with Soul Lift Cacao, I actually go beyond fair trade to what I would call direct trade. That means I have a direct relationship with the groups that are growing and producing the cacao. Not only does this ensure the quality of the product, but it also means that I'm checking on the sustainability measures and the treatment of the workers. Now there's a women's collective I work with in Guatemala that has a profit share set up. And each time I buy from them, 100% of the profits of that sale go back to the Mayan families that grow and produce the cacao. On top of that, the Women's Collective actually puts intention into the cacao for it to be a soul medicine because they know that it's going to travel around the world and warm people's hearts, bring healing to people in places where cacao doesn't grow, and that in time this is going to create positive effects that cycle back around and help people around the world. Now one last thing, most cacao in health food stores does come from Peru or Ecuador in South America. I've been told that cacao from those places might contain a small amount of caffeine, whereas Guatemalan ceremonial cacao is said to have little to no caffeine. There's a sustained, gentle kind of energy without crash or cravings, without the jitteriness, and that is part of what makes it useful for spiritual self-development. So thanks for watching, I hope this answered some of your questions, and check out the website to see more information, including how you can order some cacao to be shipped right to your doorstep.